Hi, I'm Terrell Turner, the host of the Business Talk Library. And today I have another great business owner on. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing someone that is actually located on the West Coast. So I'm grateful for her working through our difference in time zone to be on to talk about her amazing business. So welcome to the show, Ashley Lockerbie. Thank you. So, so nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I'm very interested to talk about your business, Better Booch, because I mean, kombucha is a category of drink that has definitely been, you know, becoming more and more popular. So mm -hmm. I'm interested to talk about that. Before we jump into that, tell us a little bit about your background and kind of what was your life before Better Booch? Yes. So I was, my background is in music, actually. I was a professional musician before this. Um, and so was my business partner and husband, also a professional musician. Um, so never really considered any other career path, honestly, until I went on tour and realized that um, it just wasn't, it was an amazing experience and i'm so grateful for that experience and that time in my life but it wasn't sustainable for me personally long term from like a health and um perspective and just from values wise what i wanted out of my life so um so i met my partner um at around the same time that he was arriving at this conclusion for his own life and um we set out to find something that would enable us to stay in town and um, do something that we love to do. Awesome. So now when you, when you speak of being a musician, um, how many instruments or what instruments did you play? So I am a singer and a songwriter. Um, I was on tour for four years with Rihanna as her backup singer. Okay, nice, nice, nice. <laughs> now, I guess what started the passion for the music? Was it just something that you did growing up or? Oh, I, I mean, I've been singing since I could talk, basically. So my whole <laughs> life have been, I play piano too. I, I've been just involved in music my whole life. I went to music school um, after high school. And like I said, never really considered doing anything else with my life. So it was quite a pivot <laughs> to go into beverage. I, I bet. I mean, I guess what was the, I guess you say the emotional shift like for you to go from something you've done your whole life, you always envision yourself going into beverage. Like how, how did you handle that emotional shift? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'd say very gradually. <laughs> um, it was a long process. You know, it's something I still think about sometimes, you know, I mean, the thing is that Music is something that I've had for my whole life and it's not going away. It hasn't gone away um, since I made the transition out of doing it professionally. Um, and so, you know, it's something that I can have until I'm old, you know, and, and that's what's made it easier for me. And I think like now it's the, now it's like, I'm, I'm re in love with music. I, I fell in love. I fell back in love with music because um, now it's just the thing I do for the, for the joy of it and for the fun of it. And it's not something that has that pressure of being a career and, um, having to like fit it into a box that anyone else has like created. Right. You know, I always find that very interesting when talking to entrepreneurs, I mean, because or just talking to people who think they want to be an entrepreneur because they talk mm -hmm. about, oh, I really love doing this thing. And I'm like, the dynamics of it change when yeah. it becomes like your livelihood. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's not so much just the fun of it. So, I mean, which yeah. brings me to the next question of, you know, as you kind of transition from, you know, the music industry and mm -hmm. what was it about, you know, the beverage industry that really sold it for you is like, hey, this is where I want to invest my time and energy next. Yeah. Well, I, I will say it wasn't so much the beverage industry as the beverage itself. Um, so kombucha is something that is is really really good for you it's, it's just you know there's been a lot of like um talk about how probiotics are good for you and kombucha has probiotics but most people don't talk about the other wealth of of um benefits that kombucha has like detoxifying acids and it's alkalizing and it um can it has tons of antioxidants because it's brewed with fresh tea and you know the list goes on and on and on. So um, 
it's just kind of this overall very, very healthy beverage. I mean, back in the day in China, they used to serve it to, they used to call it the tea of immortality and serve it to honored guests. And people would bring it, you know, they would serve it to like heads of state and honored guests that would come into your home. Um, and you would serve it to someone as a means of saying, hey, I want wellness and prosperity for you. Um, so to me, um, sharing that with more people was something that I could totally get behind. And we initially started making kombucha because um, my husband's, well, my now husband's sister was diagnosed with breast cancer when she was 24 years old. So super young, really aggressive form of breast cancer. She's okay now. Um, but, you know, cancer at the time, I mean, kombucha at the time was very big in the cancer community or was popular in cancer community for its potentially anti-cancerous properties. There's a Cornell study that came out about that. Um, so we started making it in our, in our home and she started making it in her home. And, um, we thought, gosh, this is way tastier than anything we can find on store shelves at the moment. So I'm sure more people would be able to benefit from this if they knew how good it could actually taste. And so that was really the impetus for starting the business. We just started, we just showed up at a couple of farmer's markets and started selling it. Um, and it grew from there. Wow, that is amazing. I mean, first, um, amazing that your, your sister-in-law is doing much better. Um, that is huge. Uh, always yeah. great to hear. And just amazing to see, like I said, how it just started from, you know, something you were exposed to, something that you started doing and started growing. So, you know, I'm curious as, as it started to grow, you know, what was kind of your thinking of, were, were you thinking of, hey, you know, we want to, you know, go to the farmer's market or we want to sell it at markets or, hey, we want to go, you know, large scale with this. Yeah. Um, so honestly, at the very beginning, we just wanted to sell enough to where we would be able to be in town and not have to take a tour to go, you know, to go and make money, and make rent. Right. Um, so because in the music industry, that transition from being like a, a touring person to being an in-town person working on in-town projects is a, a bit of a transition because it's kind of a different group of people. Um, Cause you know, and so in order to like be called for gigs that are in town for studio sessions and things like that, you need to be in town <laughs> because if you're not people just assume you're gone. So the, the goal was to just be around and to try and establish a life in town. Um, and so we thought, well, we could just sell some kombucha at the farmer's markets on the weekends and like make, a, make do something good for our community and also like make enough money to, to where we don't have to take a tour. And pretty much right away, we started getting interest from local grocery stores and cafes and restaurants that wanted to pick it up and serve it. Um, so we just kind of like ran with that. And then I'd say we got pretty serious about it about two years in, um, we did farmer's markets for, we grew from, from one farmer's market to like, I think we were doing seven per week at some point. And, um, and, <clears throat> and then, you know, we got really serious about it about two years in and, and made it a full-time thing. And that's when we really were like, okay, this has legs. This could be, this could be something big. Gotcha. So at what point I noticed on your uh, in your LinkedIn profile, I see that the, the product is canned. At what point did you guys move into canning the product? Yeah, so we were authorized in Whole Foods in 2018. Um, and we pitched them, we said, hey, we have these bottles, but we can also we were actually co packing a product for a marquee brand um, that was in cans. And that company wanted us to make it in can. So we bought a canner. <laughs> and um, so we said to Whole Foods, listen, you can have it in bottles, but we also have these cans. What do you think? And they were really into the idea of cans. And so um, we launched with our cans exclusively in Whole Foods for six months. And then um, after that, they just took off. People loved the cans. More use, there's more use occasions. You know, you can take them more places. It's way better for the environment because the um, system of recycling for aluminum cans is just really established in the U.S. Um, and they're actually 70% more likely to be recycled than glass, which is a statistic that totally blew my mind. 
Um, so, so yeah, after that, we just saw, we saw massive, massive growth, like four or 500% growth year over year for the cans. And, um, and so we just made the decision to transition fully into cans last year. Wow. That is amazing. You know, I guess, you know, when people think about, you know, like a transition, like, oh, you know, the demand for the cans were there and, you know, you transition into cans. Were there some things about being able to transition totally to cans that were like unexpected hurdles that you had to get through to fully make that transition that you didn't expect? Well, I think that, you know, you can't please all the people all the time. <laughs> and I think there were those diehard glass bottle fans that really were disappointed that we, um, that we discontinued the glass bottles. Um, but ultimately, you know, it just made the most sense for our business. I think when you're looking at, you know, you're talking about like the 80, 20 rule where, um, we were seeing so much more effort going into bottling these you know, maintaining this business for bottles from an inventory perspective, from a manufacturing, because we, we manufacture everything ourselves. We are vertically integrated. So, um, you know, we don't have a giant co-packer that we place orders with. We have to, we have to kind of Tetris all of that into our schedule, all those SKUs into our schedule. So when you're talking about having a can format and all the same flavors in bottles, that's double the amount of SKUs that you're having to like think about manufacturing all the time. So it just became kind of obvious that the right move was to go into cans because we were just, it was like way outselling our bottle business. So, yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. Now, you know, I have had, you know, kombucha and I, I enjoy the drink. I've only ever really seen it in bottles when I go to like stores mm -hmm. here in North Carolina. So where can people find your product? Like what stores or where online can they look to find your product? Yeah. So we just launched nationally in Sprouts. So if there's a Sprout store near you, we will be there <laughs> in our, in our better boost will be there in our cans. Um, and of course we also ship nationally to all 50 States with free shipping, um, through our website, betterbooch.com. So you can go there and pick up a variety case if you like to try all the flavors. Awesome. Awesome. I believe we do have a sprout. So maybe I'll try to make it there today. Yeah, by. actually, I know they do because my, um, my husband's aunt just picked it up at, at a sprouts in Raleigh at least. So. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So <laughs> hopefully if I can finish up filming for the rest of the day, I can get out and grab me a case. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Awesome. Well, before I wrap up, uh, you know, one of the questions that I like to ask every guest that comes on is, you know, when you think about the journey of where you've been and you think about kind of where you are in your business journey, you know, what's two lessons that you've learned that you would share with other business owners? Okay, two lessons. Um, number one, collaboration is so important. Don't, you know, there's I think there's a lot of, when you're starting out in business, there's often this like mentality of scarcity and, and like competition, but, um, but collaboration with other brands is in creative ways is like something that could make the difference in you being successful or not being successful. Like for example, you know, we partnered with a cold brew coffee company early on and we shared kitchen space and we shared contacts with each, you know, buyers contacts with each other. We, we did a lot of the same farmer's markets, so we would carpool a lot. And there's just like so many ways that you can kind of buddy up with folks to um, make things easier on everyone <laughs> and less expensive on everyone, right? Because everyone knows that starting a business is, you know, very stressful and also very expensive. So um, so any, any ways that you can find in collaborating with other brands is always a positive thing. Um, and second lesson is that try not to let the lows get you too low and, um, and just know that like, um, and similarly with the highs, right? Like, I think there's been many times over the course of this journey that, that my partner Trey and I would think we would get a really big opportunity and we think, okay here comes the rocket ship. Let's go. We're going to be, you know, we're going to be successful now, you know, and it's just never like that. It's never one thing. It's all a culmination of all the efforts together that then starts to slowly allow you to rise. So just know that, um, 
there's no such thing as overnight success, basically. And, um, and that it's hard because it is hard. It's not because you're doing something wrong. It's just hard. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. absolutely love that. Yes. Yeah. So actually, thank you so much for coming on. It, it's definitely been a pleasure to have you on to learn a little bit more about your background. And again, hats off to you for making that amazing transition from something you, you know, you just grew up wanting to do in music to moving over to making a product that, that you love and a product that's helping people and the phenomenal success that you're having. So Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Great conversation. Really enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. If you like what you heard, don't be selfish. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and then share this with a friend because you know a business owner that could definitely use this insight. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, share it with a friend, and turn on the notification bell so you get all the updates when we release a new episode.